what's going on you lot? What are you all saying? These gimbal companies are coming out with some pretty funky names nowadays, and this one's called the Weebill. Now the Weebill is meant to be one of the smallest birds in the world, and um, that's quite handy because uh, I don't mind a small bird. But before we jump to any conclusions, talking about specs and all stuff like that, let's get stuck in mate and uh, see what he's saying, yeah? Sweet. So, um, we should probably talk about this new gimbal. And I know what you're gonna say, hold on James, hold on, we ain't seen no real-time footage in that clip. Where's the real-time footage? Slow-mo don't can. Well, as it happens, mate, I've actually done some. So if you hang about, you'll see it. So then let's get straight into this little like review slash chatting about the Zion Weebill Lab. What's good about it, what's not that good about it and what I think about it after using it for a couple of days out in London. The first thing you notice about this gimbal, is it's gotta be the size, mate. The thing is tiny. Look at the size of this thing. Like, I'm not joking, yeah? That is pretty small. So when it comes to camera gear, and most importantly, gimbals, for me, the most important thing is size, weight, and time. Time meaning, like, how long does it take to set up? This thing, in terms of those, pretty much ticks every single box. Now a massive thing for me is to be non-intrusive when I'm shooting and this thing is so small that no one even batted an eye at me mate. Usually I get people coming up to me and going, oh, hold on, hold on, what's that? What you got there? What you got there? What is that? What, what you filming? But no one said anything to me here so if it's small enough to go in my overhead compartment and it's just small enough to fit in my bag mate, happy days. Now obviously you want it to be light, if you're running about all day long, you don't want to be breaking your bicep in half to just walk around with a gimbal. This thing is actually under a kilo, so that's pretty handy. Next thing we're going to talk about, obviously the design. It looks completely different. I know what you're thinking, what's this dodgy bit hanging out here? I thought the exact same thing when I first saw this. So basically this is where they're now keeping the batteries. They're taking the batteries out of this like extended bit here to make the whole thing smaller and they're whacking the batteries in here. And they've also come up with another function for this. And um, if you take off the tripod. And whack it on the top, mate. You've now got sling mode. Now, I'm not going to lie, mate. I loved sling mode the first time I ever used it. The second time I ever used it, I hated it. And then as the day went on, as I was shooting with it, and I slowly got more and more used to it, I actually really started to like it. I think it's where I've been used to doing inverted mode for so many years, I was a bit like, hold on a sec, what's going on here? It kind of took me out of my territory and I was like, no, I don't know if I like this. But after a while, I did eventually get used to it and I was like, yes, mate, this is sick. Oh, hey, these waves, mate. It's like Hawaii round here. The most annoying thing for me when I was using this gimbal was the fact that if I wanted to go into sling mode, I'd have to unscrew this. and screw it back on the top again. The time it takes me to get it off of here and onto here is just a nightmare and it just does my head in. But hold on, today something really kind of impressive happened. Something turned up at me door and it was only Zion who sent me something. And they sent me these cheeky little quick release plates that go on the bottom of your tripod. And you know what, this is super, super bizarre because I literally drew up a little diagram about two days ago about to send it to Zion and say, hold on you lot, you definitely need to make some kind of like hot shoe quick release plate thing for the Weebill Lab. Two days later, mate, I get this in the post and it's basically that. So all you do is screw them onto each axis of the gimbal, which is obviously at the bottom and then on the sling mode bit. And then all you do, mate, is pop that little bottom off and whack it on the top, mate. And you're laughing. Now, how long does that take me to whack it from there to there? Zion. I think this is probably the best thing you've ever invented in your life, mate. 
Another feature on this gimbal is the fact that you can actually lock the motors on the gimbal. Now for me, this is the best thing about this gimbal. When it's traveling in your bag, it's secure, it ain't wobbling about all over the place, knocking things over and just looking a bit stupid. It just locks into place now, and that is sturdy, mate. There is a massively decreased chance that you are gonna break one of your motors now that that's like that, and it doesn't move about in your bag, so mate, yeah, happy days. Next thing you've got is like the menu interface. It's definitely very, very similar to the Crane 2. But also we've now got the POV button. I'll give you a tenner if you can guess what the POV button does. And if you press the POV button twice, this sets you into vortex mode. Now vortex mode is what everyone's banging on about on the DJI Ronin S. And that is basically where you can just roll the camera completely. Now the Wii build was the first time I've ever actually used like that rolling vortex mode on a gimbal. Right, so we're gonna do a little bit of like street photography in that. We're gonna shoot some people without them knowing. I much prefer it to POV mode. You've got so much more control over how you're rolling the gimbal, how it looks, you're panning, you're tilting. Cause POV mode kind of just goes all over the place at times. And that's great. But if you want a little bit more control, mate, vortex mode, mate, I'm real. We're gonna try and do a spinning barrel shot of peace and prosperity. Oh, I've actually decided I don't like the POV mode just because you don't really have enough control of it. Whereas the vortex mode, you completely control like the angle that you're shooting at. And then there's this go mode at the top. Now go mode is essentially like freaking sport mode, mate. Now, what do I think about it? I think it's an absolute gimmick, mate. The whole point of a gimbal is the fact that you have like steady movements. Why are you trying to add in like fast movements? Anyway, if you like it, you like it. Do you know what I mean? It's sweet. Another feature that the Weebill's got is this trigger on the front. Now, when you hold down this trigger, it instantly activates full follow mode. Now, this was something that I saw on like the DJI Ronin S and I was a bit like, mm, I don't think I'd ever use that because I don't really use full follow mode that much. But I started using it on here and I was like, actually, that mode actually ain't that bad. And then I found myself using it all bloody day long, mate. So yeah, that, that's a feature that I'm really, really happy with. Next up on the specifications list is the mad follow focus. Now I'm gonna be honest with you lot, I don't really use follow focuses that much. I'm only really gonna use it if I'm on like a higher end commercial shoot or a client shoot. That being said, the follow focus on the Weebill is without a doubt the best follow focus system that I've ever experienced on a gimbal. It's small, it's compact, and it is very, very easy to set up. You can use it on any camera because it's a servo mechanical follow focus. No software needed, mate. Plug and play and you're ready to rock and roll. And you are focusing all over the gaff, mate, honestly. And after the follow focus, you got this little attachment bit here, and that attaches onto the side of the gimbal. Now this actually fits, got it, your phone, mate, yeah? So you whack your phone in there, just like that, and now you can actually use your phone as a monitor. You can monitor your image, you can actually change all of your camera settings and the gimbal settings in the Zyplay app. All you have to do is connect your camera to this little bit underneath the gimbal. That basically transmits the output onto your phone, mate. And then you can just use your phone as a monitor. You don't even need to add a monitor onto your, your setup. You don't need to go out and buy a decent little monitor. Happy days, mate, it's on your phone. But I do know that you have to get like a different package to get like the servo follow focus and the phone attachment with this gimbal. So make sure that you're buying the right one. Now the payload is apparently three kilos. Now I do know that you can't fit like super big setups on here because the motor is actually so close at the back. The frame of the gimbal is just a little bit smaller than most. So I think it struggles to actually hold much bigger cameras. Now for me, it's absolutely fine because I've got a tiny little setup. I just use an A7S with super light Canon lenses. So it's fine for me. But if you've got a big fat setup, mate, I'd be a little bit cautious on what you can actually fit on here. So go and have a little look at some reviews and stuff like that to see if your setup can actually fit on one of these gimbals. So people, I know what you're all thinking, how much Wonga is this gonna cost me? What's my bank balance gonna say this time? Um, yeah, this thing comes in at like $599 and £579. That doesn't quite make sense. Why are you lot in the States getting it cheaper basically than us? Like, come on, do us Brits a favor, mate. And one thing I'm definitely not happy about, I never ever see myself shoot with a gimbal and I got one of my mates to come and shoot some BTS for me, big up Daniel Parker, and it was the first time I've ever seen myself shooting with a gimbal this is what I'm confused about. Now, what the hell am I doing with my arm? Why has no one ever said to me, hold on, James, why are you walking like an absolute numpty, mate? 
I'm gonna have to stop doing that, annoying. Anyway, people, let's wrap this one up. Um, I'm very, very happy with the way that gimbals are going nowadays. If they're gonna get smaller and lighter, I'm a happy geezer. So overall, I think this gimbal is absolutely sick. If you're like a travel filmmaker, you want like a light run and gun setup that's nice and small, compact, and still relatively strong. I don't think that the Weebill Lab is the perfect gimbal just yet, but without a doubt, it is heading in that direction. So let me know in the comments whether you think this is a decent gimbal or whether you think it's just a pants gimbal. And I will be catching you in the next one. Peace. Cannons and that.